behalf of my family and Veronica, what's that name? Veronica Bruce Butler, who was uh, just 48 years old, is you know passed away from a double breast cancer in September 2nd uh, last year. Tremendous, tremendous uh, strength she, she displayed and demonstrated. Um, she had so much to, so much physical, so many physical things to leave behind. Being our family, huge family, loving family. Our mom, she had two young adult children. Uh, one just just turned 25, and one just turned 30. A two-year-old grandbaby who called it Duchess. We just absolutely loved her. A husband of 27 years. So she had so much. She was so sweet. She was so brilliant. Very smart. Um, it's just sacrifices. That's what her life was really about sacrifice. She loved God and she wasn't ashamed of it. She, you asked her, How are you doing? She said, I love God. She says, God's going to have the last word. She said, Whatever God says, I'm okay. And uh, she says, God got me. That was it. So, so she recognized her faith, recognized the realities of what it was for her, and she just took it in with grace. Uh, she had an amazing sense of humor. For example, she could be in a hospital, um, just out of surgery or something, but still cognizant enough, enough to respond. You say, Ron, how are you doing today? Let's say, for example, a doctor might come and say, Ronka, so uh, how are you? Uh, did you eat your lunch? And she might say something very comical. Well, she might, I'd rather eat your lunch or something like this. Kind of like, so, but always keeping it, always positive. Always positive. And she and I had some incredible bond. I was 12 years older than she was. She, I called her, she called me bra, and I called her sis. And she, from time to time, we'd have these long conversations. And so she said, bro, she said, I'll always respect you. I'll always honor you. I'll always love you. And I said, why? She said, because, yeah, I, had, I know I had eight other siblings. She said, but you took time. See, you taught me my ABCs. See, you taught me how to be. You taught me how to be respectful and how to want to learn, how to be a good person. She said, your life, she said, you have that model. She said, I don't have to do much work. Your model, you, are for, our, for my kids and your, your niece and nephew. And so I felt so honored by that. And again, it's not something that I did. It's just like something that happened. It was a part of me. And it's just trying to do the right thing. So I'm looking back at her. I'm looking back at all of the sacrifices she made. And what basically just spelled out to me is that she left like a living spirit. And that spirit said it was love, peace, and compassion for others. Compassion for them, that's what it was. It's like throughout her, she made these sacrifices for her children, worrying about other people. On her death and dying bed, she's like ordering gifts and cards and things for other people. And not so much focused on her until it was too late. She's about two, two weeks or so before she passed, she said to her mom, she's mom, she had it back over my life, and she said, I only have one regret. And I said, what's that? She said, I didn't take better care of myself. Better care of myself. And so I'm a, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, I'm not ashamed of it, but the, I'm looking at her as, as the walk that Jesus walked. Jesus was so, compi uh, so concerned about the woman at the well, the blind man, the lame man. Jesus said, well, I know these people come after me. I, I'm out of town. I'm out. He could have been so worried about him trying to protect his own faith, his own person, that he was so worried and, and um, concerned about other people. And he made that sacrifice. And so I'm looking at her. Not that she was Jesus, but she was Jesus-like in that sense. It wasn't her. It was that spirit that she embraced to carry on and to support other people. And um, I think that's some of the embodiment of what you guys, you're making sacrifice. There are people who disagree with you to the, to the max, but you're risking that. Not just your person, but your reputation, your family, your careers, sacrifice. Those should be rewarded. Not with money, but just with honor. That's what we're honoring her. And so I'm, I'm sharing her with you so we can share to Brockton. Brockton, I, I, and then I'm, then I'm Brockton now, 80, 18 years. 
And I traveled around the world. I brought in his home for me. Brought in so much promise, so much for diversity, for the youth, for the just the newness. Everything's developing. The vision here, the vision here. You guys, it's incredible. And I support you a thousand percent. A thousand percent. And as you know, I'm, I'm gradually getting more and more involved to put in my little two cents, you know, to do that. On that note, I'm just going to give you an overview of what that was. When she passed, it, it was, um, spirit came on that. She has to continue to live. And we lived through her spirit. And that was, so less than two weeks after she passed, I created this foundation called Team Veronica, the Cancer Resource Center. It's not just about breast cancer. Because cancer doesn't say, OK, I, I'm here, I'm good. It keeps them moving around. For her, it was starting her breast, went to her spine, went to her brain. Mm. So it doesn't have a destination. It's not just in Brockton, it's in everywhere. So it's not the cancer, it's the people. Okay, well, that need help. So Team Monica, we're open to everybody. And it's not just the individual. We're now supporting and partnering and supporting other organizations who are of like minds. So it's not about us, it's not what we get. And it's not what you get, it's what you share. It's not what you make, it's what you keep, and what you share. That's it. So that's what we're, so we, 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 there's no boundaries, oh, you're not from this area. No, it doesn't matter. It's the person, not the thing. So that's what we had. So now some of the future things, some of the things we've done. She got, again, she passed on September 2nd. She was buried on September 14th. On October 23rd, keeping that you know, momentum going, the knowledge, and it just so happened that October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we had a, a walk for breast cancer awareness in DW Field. And God was so good. I'm a, I love God. And I recognize all that we say, that little blessing. God doesn't know little blessing. A blessing is a blessing. We quantify, we qualify and say, oh, that's a small but No, it's all a blessing. Because it doesn't, it's a blessing is a gift, sometimes undeserved. It either goes to you, to you, or to neither. And so that day, I recognize it. It was on a Sunday. Beautiful morning, beautiful time. Marie could tell you, the senator could tell you, beautiful time for walking. Because guess what? The very next day, it poured like no tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> that Monday. <laughs> yeah. I said, God, you are so great. Even the sun is shining out there. So great. You got it showing up in unison. So great. And so that's what we did on the 23rd. And then on 20, 23rd, now on the 23rd of, 24th of October, and on the 23rd of December, continuing on the spirit and to recognize women. It's not about her. It's about those who know, don't know, will find out. The cancer survivors. And uh, um, Bob David, who is the director and manager of the um, Boston Medical Cancer Support Group, he appeared and came to the banquet. And he said something really simple but profound. He said if a person is diagnosed, for example, a person is diagnosed with cancer on Monday, and they live till Tuesday, they're a survivor. Mm -hmm. This is not quantified. Well, I'm surviving 10. No, you survive. You survive. And though, and I and I even expand it to we may not have cancer in our bodies, but we support it and so close to someone else that you can. Have that energy, that compassion to support them. Guess what? We're survivors too, because we're in this together. We didn't lose our minds, so we're survivors of that. So I bless all of you with that. So that's what that. So now, in Monday, we did the uh, Valentine's Day of Love. I call it. We had some of the cancer survivors, some new to us, and some of the um, ones that came to the banquet we had on uh, December twenty third. Um, come on Monday, and we showered them. Shower them with flowers and cards and balloons and candies. And this is all part of saying, we love you. Brockton loves you. This is, we need you to tell your story. That's how we live. We grow through your stories. And so what's happening today, again, I'm so honored. And it's a great big thing happening uh, to happen on, and all of you get uh, further information and uh, requests for great ways to support it and be involved on May 12th. It's going to be on a Thursday. We're going to have a Cancer Resource Expo. Mm -hmm. Cancer Resource Expo. 
And what I realized in meeting so many people, and they said, oh, you know, I have cancer, and now I don't know, I can't understand these documents that I have to sign for my, for my husband. Oh, now I know where he's gone, I'm going to have to move out of this big house. And I, you know, I can't cook like he cooks, so I don't know what to cook for him. So we got to connect all these resources that we brought in. Lawyers, movers, nutritionists, housing, bankers, insurance, all these different things, resources. So we're going to have a team challenge up at the big facility. I, I envision having all these tables, these booths, and have all these resources coming, brochures, information, guys, so they can begin making those connections in advance. So when that time or the day comes, they don't be like, well, uh, I need to move. Who am I going to call? They've already struck relationships. And then the people who come, they're coming because they, they have a compassion to this. So that relationship. So this is a way of bonding, acknowledging what's available, bringing the business community together, bringing people who are survivors together, people who are supporters together. And this is like, I think it's a powerful word. I think it's a powerful point. So that's what's happening here. So without further ado, I want to begin introducing you guys, most of most of perhaps all of you know, perhaps my mom and my brother John, you know, you guys. And uh, if you, you want to introduce yourself, and say a few words, after which um, we're going to have an, um, do a ribbon cutting. We'll go outside of the door. We're going to post this ribbon. Each of you can take a pair of scissors and just symbolically cut this. And cutting is just like creating a new environment, creating a new environment. <laughs> this is my daughter's son. Yeah, this is my, my daughter's son. Hello. And um, some of you might, guys might recognize her. She works at uh, NeighborWorks right? Housing Center with Cindy Tendergast. Yeah. And um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut a cake and again, symbol well, in real time, today happens to be Veronica's 49th birthday. Mm -hmm. So, again, she's inviting you guys to her party. This is a party we celebrate what's to come, what has happened, what's to come, in the spirit of love, peace, and compassion for others. And so, we thank you um, for that. So, we're going to begin with you. Oh, thank you. I want to thank you, Dr. Bruce. I want to thank you, family. I want to thank all the city councilors. Again, the Senate is here, Senator Brady. Uh, Councilor Texera and Mendez and Tavares and Azak. And this is about coming together as a community. And uh, the first time I met you, uh, you and I are Christians, and you shared this story. And this is a story that needs to be shared. This is a very special place. It really is. When you come in here, um, you know, you can sense that there's going to be support, there's going to be love, there's going to be discussion. People that suffer from cancer, and all of us know people that have. We know people that have passed from it, we know survivors. Um, and I like what you said to me earlier, they're not victims, yeah, they're, they're survivors. Um, this is also a very historic building, yeah. it really is. Um, uh, this was the Stacey Adams Shoe Factory, Rocky Marciano's father worked in this building. Um, but it's also been changed now, so Van Buren Records, international recording artist, is in this building. So you're bringing another piece to this building that's needed. Uh, I'm a little biased in this neighborhood because my grandmother and my, my dad grew up next door in the house next door and I lived there for a year in 1970, but this is a special place, so I, I just say thank you um, as, as the mayor but as a Brocktonian. Um, when I shared with you my dad's a cancer survivor and my sister in law you, you, you gave me the bell and you gave me this to give them because that's what people need. Yeah. I mean, you told me when that 28-year-old came here the other day and sat on that couch and she has no family, she doesn't, her, doesn't have any family here. Two other survivors were here to support her and that's so important. So um, I just want to say thank you. you thank, thank you for what you. you're doing. Yeah. God bless you. We, we thank you. And, and, and happy birthday, Veronica. Yes. Um, and so as mayor, I wanted to just give a citation. Um, be it known um, that the mayor of Brockton uh, hereby extends appreciation to Team Veronica Cancer Resource Center in recognition of your grand opening in the City of Champions. Thank you for your dedicated service to those who are battling cancer in our community. And it gives me great pleasure. On behalf of all the city councilors and of the state delegation, uh, we're in this together on the 16th day of February, 2022. Uh, Robert Sullivan, Mayor of the City of Brighton. Yeah, thank God you bless so you, much. God, God bless, you. bless you. And as the Mayor mentioned, cancer has, has touched a lot of our lives. As I talked to you the other day, I lost her girlfriend in uh, 2008. She had breast cancer and, and uh, spread. And um, we've all, all of our family members and friends have been touched by cancer. It's been a thing that we can 
we don't forget and so forth, but there is hope out there. Yes. And through what you are doing for our community and all of us working together, and, you know, you mentioned earlier about the the sports figures getting the recognition mm -hmm. and so forth, but we we are you know we had sports history in Brockton and so forth, but we are the city of champions because we all work together in Brockton and no one does it alone. That's right. And and you've been a great advocate. You know, you had the walk and the run up DW Fields back a little while back and. Opening this facility is great news for us in the city of Brockton, and we thank you for all that. And bringing awareness, because, you know, there's a lot of things going on, as we mentioned, we're still, um, you know, with the pandemic that's going on and other things, and uh, it's, it's been a difficult road for a lot of people, but there is hope, and we got to keep moving. We can't let any distractions stop us in our lives. There's always curves that are thrown at us in our lives and so forth, but we've got to keep going forward, and working together to bring more awareness to this helps. And it helps, as the young ladies were here the other day too, one woman came all the way from um, uh, New Bedford, New Bedford and, and she didn't know where to turn or everything else was straight. And we have to be there for each other because no one does this alone. Us, us as elected officials don't do it alone with the help of people in the community working together and us working together as a team. So thank you for all you're doing and to your family too. God bless you God as you. well. I, you. I know it's, uh, it's not easy when we lose a loved one. So I lost a brother two years ago to, to the coronavirus and had a heart attack and then my sister mm -hmm. who was older died several years. They were a little older though. They weren't young like Veronica and other people we've known my girlfriend. So this official citation be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to Team Veronica Cancer Center in recognition of the grand opening of the center dated, dedicated to be a resource to those battling the disease in memory of Veronica Bruce Butler, who inspired bravery and strength. This is signed by the Senate President, Karen Spoke of the Clerk, Mike Earl, and myself, Mike Brady. And again, thank you to all you've done for us. And um, I know it's all of us working together. That's where we get things done. So, and I do have to let everybody know the State House of Representatives is in session in the State House today working on legislation. So Jerry Cassie and Michelle DeVoy couldn't be here, but uh, they send their regards. So. And, and I'm going to pass it on to our city council because we have a great group of elected officials as well as the mayor and all our city officials here. So Absolutely. we have a great team in Brockton. And again, uh, we've got to work together to get this done. So yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. And uh, city council at So um, I just want to tell you that today you're really planting a seed for something so much bigger that not even you or any of us know the extent of how much this is going to grow because we just feel in your heart and your passion and that is really going to spread and I um, am, and just being here and, and being a witness for this moment it's very special and I really thank you for everything that you're doing for your family to be right beside you for the mayor to be here supported as like given the blessing that this city is with you and we're behind you, we're supporting you, and we just want to see you keep on flourishing and uh, your calling. You know it's your calling. And you yeah. have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. On behalf of uh, City Council Lodge, David Texera, this is more than a, a team for Ronica. This is a together team for Ronica. And uh, each one of us has been touched through this. Horrible disease. I lost a brother two years ago mm -hmm. to a cancer. I lost my grandmother to cancer. I know what you guys as a family went through, but it has to be together. The strength, when we embrace each other together, we can do a lot more. And whatever I can do on my behalf, just call me anytime. And I'll be there. Thank you. Shirley Azak, um, City Councilor. First of all, we could talk for hours. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, we met randomly, but I, I was meant to meet you. And what you're doing is amazing. And uh, happy birthday to Veronica today. Mm -hmm. And um, I look forward to being a part of this journey because bringing breast cancer awareness or cancer awareness is, um, is really something that's coming from your heart. And you're doing everything you can by getting us involved. And... Um, this is something that I haven't seen before. I don't think anybody, I mean, there is awareness, but this is at this level, at this community level, it, um, it really hits home. So I, 
I look forward to being a part of this journey with you. And congratulations on your beautiful space in this beautiful building. So um, this is what Brockton is about. Thank you, Jimmy, so much. And thank you for everyone being here. Thank you for me to be here. Uh, since I met you, I know you're so special. I never tell you about myself. I lost my mom when I was kind of little bit, a uh, little, about 18. And then I lost my dad when I was 15. Mm -hmm. All for cancer. And we never talk about it because it's something I don't like to talk. Every time I feel I want to talk, I just I feel so emotional. But since we met, I know we have something so special. And then right now, we been through a lot because my sister-in-law, she just went out, she had cancer, she just broke. And uh, I'm just so um, grateful like you're doing this because uh, a lot of people, they just have, they don't know how to go through. And uh, since you put this together, I've been start with you since then. I'm so like, you know, grateful when you talk to other people about this. And then I think this is amazing. Uh, I'm so speechless because I don't want to talk about my parents because I'm still hurt inside and sure. today I'm still crying and then I uh, I thank you God bless you and then God bless your family God thank knows you. the reason everything the reason why that's all I can say it and uh, everything we just gotta leave you up to his hand and then we're here for mission everybody come here to my mission we never know so now we'll do uh, cut the ribbon everybody in okay on three can one, see the two, one, two, three. This resource center is not just for cancer survivors. It expands to cancer su uh, supporters. So if someone made a, a financial donation, if they participated in a walk, if someone, if someone gave someone else a ride to their point, guess what? They are a supporter. And we want to support them. We want to try to have all the resources, the physical, the financial, in place. So if Tommy says, uh, you know, makes a call, listen, I need to go visit my friend Mark, uh, who's going to be at the, he has an appointment, but I'm kind of short on, don't worry, we got you, we're going to send an Uber. We're going to be able to do that. Because that, again, supports him. He lifts, he's lifted up. He lives longer. He lives better. So the whole idea, the goal is to improve the quality of life. Just do a simple act, a real simple act, and then make a difference. As we amass finances, we're going to look at, we, we know how critical even a cell phone is to someone. We know someone who may be unemployment, uh, unemployed, maybe short. We know that a mere $35 or $50 plan, phone plan, can keep them in service. But it's the phone service that keeps them connected with their family, their friends and their doctors and stuff. So these are critical Simple, simple ways. And this is what we want to expand to that. On some of the other services we want to expand, including, in fact, I was recently gifted, you know, for this, a fairly new um, massage table. I'm like, what am I going to do with this massage table? <laughs> then I have friends who support this who are massage therapists. They're licensed. And they belong to a network of other massage therapists. And who, uh, that network, they donate they put aside a certain number, you know, a number of hours or some extra of the time, and they go around and give free massages to cancer survivors or cancer patients. So we're going to expand that. And so the space we're physically standing in now, that's a temporary. I want to say temporary because we have some things in work for even larger office space here in this building. So with the larger space, more services, more progress. We want to expand to uh, food awareness. When the nice weather comes, we're going to be connecting with the local clinics and hospitals to schedule free mammograms, prostate checks, skin checks, all these things. As the senator said, is to make things people aware that these are available. And we know that because Brockton is such a diverse uh, community, we have many em immigrants and some of like are not used to health systems and programs that may not be aware of them. We want to let them know, don't be afraid. You don't have to feel like you need to go into another established institution in Boston, you see a bunch of white coats and machines and stuff, just come and you can relax. And so the broader and the bigger ultimate picture for this is the vision, is to get a building. In this building we'll, we'll have designated spaces, space for, I call it a quiet space. People can come and meditate, pray, like candles, and see music. They just need to get out of those four walls at home and come just to relax in a nice 
homey uh, environment. Another space we want to have, like a little cafe area. They want to just come and have a chat with their neighbor, but out of, away from that, those walls that reminded them of the recent loss. Just come out, get out. And have another space where I have like a little gift shop. Because we know that a lot of when people are down, they have a lot of time. And many people are artistically inclined. They draw, paint. So we want to be able to, and some of those same persons may not have an income, or not as much. So we want to, as an entrepreneurial effort, we want to be able to help transform those talents and put them into a gift shop, put a price on it. Now they have an extra source of income. Now they can see their worth even in their situation. So I want to do that. And then have an, a, a larger space, a meeting space, like here. So we can bring in uh, specialists, nutritionists, insurance people. They can give specialized information sessions so they can uh, to know. Knowledge is power, but the proper use of that knowledge is superpower. You know, that's what I said. I want to do that. Just kind of give you like, a vision what, what, what what's to come. And it will happen. It will happen because I'm, I'm determined. Uh, I don't want to deep me up <laughs> with that. So with that, I am uh, deeply honored. And again, I have presentations for you, for you guys who would like for you to, to uh, bless this. It says, a certificate of recognition and appreciation in the spirit of love, peace, and compassion for others presented to, in each of your names here in this case, is the Honorable Mayor of Brockton, Robert F. Sullivan, for being a supporter of Team Veronica Cancer Resource Center Awarded the 16th day of February 2022, official office opening ribbon cutting ceremony. And signed by me, founder, director, and brother, Dr. James E. Bruce. Okay, so oh, we thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you, you so, much. Thanks so much. Yeah, and then we have this as a, um, I'm going to give my little business plug. I own the custom printing shop on uh, North Main Street, right next to Dairy Queen. What's Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 11:30. Yeah, so, uh, so printed expressions and gifts. So I, I wanted to uh, uh, pour in some of my arts and talents and gifts into uh, uh, customizing this mug. So I always reminded, I'll be reminded. So I present this as some chocolates. From you know, it's so gonna keep it sweet. Yeah. And there's a card here. So Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Each Thank you very much. God, no, God bless you. And we have. Um, yeah. Here we go. Um, the same wording says the Honorable Massachusetts State Senator Michael Brady. So I can present this to you and. Yeah, thank you. And then we have we have the Honorable Brockton City Councilor at Large, Rita Mendez. And then we have uh, the Honorable Brockton City Councilor at Large, David Texiera. This is for you. That's for you, my Thank brother. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank That's you. for you. Yes. Then we have uh, the Honorable Brockton City Councilor, Shirley Asak. Thank, Thank you. And this is for you. Thank you. Yes. And then we have the Honorable City Councilor, Maria Tavares. And so with that said, again, once again, to thank you all for that. So at this time, if we could sing happy birthday to Veronica and also welcome you guys. One, two, three, Veronica, we sing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Veronica. Happy birthday.